your famous beef with Donald Trump. Um, Donald who? Donald Trump. <laughs> London Mayor Sadiq Khan is the first Muslim mayor of a major Western capital city. He was first elected in 2016, and now he's running for a historic third term. What I'm most excited about in my third term is the possibility of a government that's pro-London, and that's a Labour government with a general election eight months time. Born in London, Khan's parents moved to the UK from Pakistan in the 1960s. He began his career as a lawyer specializing in human rights. In 2005, he was elected as the Labour MP for Tooting, where he served until 2016. He then ran for mayor of the British capital, winning that election with 57% of the vote. This is the best country in the world to be a Muslim. In this episode of Real Talk, we attended an open iftar event in London during the last day of Ramadan, where we had the opportunity to catch up with the city's mayor. Today, we managed to speak about Muslim representation in UK politics, combating Islamophobia, his decision to run for a third term in 2024, and even his feud with Donald Trump. Mayor Khan. Alaikum Sam, how are you, sir? All right. Mayor Khan, thanks for coming on the show. It's a pleasure to be on the show. <laughs> I fought in the rain just to be with you today. Listen, for those that are watching this, it's raining outside, we're hiding inside. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so it's been seven years since you were elected mayor of London. Um, you were the first Muslim mayor of a Western capital. What does that title mean to you today? Does it still carry the same weight that, that it does today that it did back then? Well, when I, when, I, when I ran to be the mayor, I didn't run as a Muslim candidate. Uh, yeah. you know, the aspiration wasn't to be the first Muslim mayor. I'm somebody who happens to be Muslim. Mm -hmm. Islam is my faith and I practice my faith. Uh, we have multiple identities. I'm a Londoner, I'm English, I'm British, I support Liverpool. I'm Muslim, of course, of Pakistani ethnic origin, of Asian uh, heritage, but clearly it's an integral part of my identity. And during my campaign, when I ran to be mayor, it was used against me. My religion, my deen, was used against me. But the wonderful thing about this city is, notwithstanding, those people used my religion against me, they voted for me in record numbers. And that shows what a wonderful city uh, London is. And the reason why it's important mm -hmm. to remember that mm -hmm. is there are some people who try to stoke up culture wars. They try and pit communities against each other. Our religion is demonized by many. And so I, I try my very hardest to be a good mayor uh, as an example of you know, the possibility to be both Western and Muslim, mm -hmm. to be British and Muslim, and to show that you can be uh, successful and be a Muslim. So it's important for you to make that distinction? I think uh, it's really important for this reason, amongst many others, is I'm not just the mayor of Muslims. Mm -hmm. I'm the mayor for those who are Hindus, who are Sikhs, or Jewish, or Christians, those who are members of an organized faith, and those that aren't, those who are older, those who are younger, those of Asian origin, of African origin, of European uh, heritage. I'm everybody's mayor. I'm a mayor for all Londoners. Sure. For those of you that, uh, that aren't Muslims, uh, fasting is really hard. Uh, during this month of uh, Ramadan, because I've been fasting, I've uh, lost a few inches. Before Ramadan, I was six foot six inches. You've spoken about experiencing Islamophobia. Um, recent figures have shown last year that um, hate crimes against Muslims and Jews have risen. Uh, I think 42% uh, a rise in 42% against uh, Muslims in hate crimes. Now, do you see Islamophobia as an issue in this country? And how do you tackle it if you do? Look, I think it's possible to say on the one hand, uh, this is the best country in the world to be a Muslim. Mm. I speak as somebody who's uh, an ethnic minority and a religious minority. I would choose nowhere else in the world to raise my daughters. But you can say that, and on the other hand, accept there are big problems around Islamophobia. There are big issues in relation to how our religion is demonized. There are big issues in relation <coughs> to the portrayal of Muslims in films, in TVs, in the media. There's big problems in relation to when a minority, a very, 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 very small minority of people from our religion do something that's bad, the entire religion, there's generalization made against that. And we know many Muslims suffer Islamophobia, verbal abuse, physical attacks, uh, mosques uh, be, you know, face criminal damage and so forth. And so you can say, I'm really proud to be a British Muslim, but there are problems, we're going to challenge them. What do you think of Hamza Yusuf's uh, election? I'm incredibly proud. I'm so proud that we have, uh, you know, not just a, a prime minister of Asian uh, heritage, it's really important, but we have a First Minister of Scotland who's uh, not just of Asian heritage but of uh, Muslim faith. Mm -hmm. uh, what's wonderful as well, it shows that we Muslims aren't one homogenous blob. We've got diversity within the religion of Islam and indeed within the Asian ethnic origin as well. You can be Labour, you can be Tory, you can be SNP. The key thing though is, uh, you know, what it means to boys and girls growing up in our country mm -hmm. is they see people holding the highest office. So I'm hoping people in Scotland you know, boys and girls of Islamic faith, of 
ethnic minority backgrounds think, you know what, if the First Minister can look like him, mm. so can I. And mm -hmm. that aspiration is very important. I, I've got this uh, saying, you can't be it if you can't see it. Mm -hmm. And people can now see our, our Prime Minister on, on many things I disagree with him. On many, many things I disagree with him. Mm. But you can't escape the fact we've got an Asian Prime Minister, right? Mm. Uh, same goes for Hamza in uh, at Scotland. The difference is, Hamza's a friend, Rishi's not. <laughs> well, actually, I want to ask about a scenario, a similar scenario that you've been in that Hamza's actually been in. During his campaign, you've had several media outlets kind of zeroing in on his faith, you know, making all sorts of speculations. On the other hand, you had some conservative Muslims coming out and say that, you know, he's too liberal. Is that a price you pay as a Muslim politician in the UK? One of the, one of the phrases that we politicians live by is politics is the art of compromise. Uh, what do I mean by that? Look, you can't please all the people all the time. You can't, in fact, please, uh, uh, you know, all the people any of the time. You've got to try and be authentic, mm -hmm. understand your, your North Star, understand why you're in politics, and, you know, do what you can to be a public uh, servant. You know, Hamza, myself, there are many other uh, Muslims uh, you know, who do public service, who are in the, in the public eye. None of us are perfect. Mm -hmm. None of us ask to be role models. None of us puts herself up on, you know, pedal store. We recognise we've got responsibility as uh, role models, but we're not perfect, uh, and often we, we compromise. But actually, we've got asked another question, which is, what is the role of a Muslim as a minority in the West? Uh, and it's really important we recognise that means integration. That means understanding, you know, those who are different to ourselves. That means that means celebrating our diversity. Mm -hmm. Tonight, for example, at this open iftar in Trafalgar Square, yeah. don't you be Muslims opening their fast? There will be people from different backgrounds, different ages. Uh, We've seen the uh, queues, people uh, it's, lining it's up. Great. Yeah. And the great thing about Open Ifta is it's a way of breaking bread and making friendships. And that's the joys of London, our diversity is a strength to be celebrated rather than a weakness to be denigrated. Mm -hmm. Last question, because I know you have a place to be. Your famous beef with Donald Trump. Um, Donald who? Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> what, you, you won your re-election, didn't you? There's a great, there's a great tweet. Uh, who thought I'd have said this, but there's a great tweet. Uh, that Donald Trump said, he called me hashtag stone cold loser. Well, I won yeah. my re-election, how about him? Yeah, yeah, there you go, that's your answer. But I do want to ask this, Donald Trump, you know, Boris Johnson, years after he left the mayor of London office, he's still, you know, criticizing you, talking about you. You've said that these guys are obsessed with you. I want to ask, do you think that this is clickbait because you're a Muslim politician? Uh, all the evidence I've seen from experts who study this it's actually what the way the algorithms work is there are certain things that lead to more traffic on social media and i'm clickbait uh from so you just, agree yeah without that's the evidence that's the evidence i've been given yeah uh you know when donald trump by the way you know said nasty things about me uh not just did um we see an increase in the negative stuff on social media against me but we we're all concerns about islamophobia when when johnson said some of his islamophobic uh, stuff we saw an increase in islamophobic uh, attacks that's why words are really important and they should be used really carefully and there's no doubt not just Trump and Johnson you've got some journalists in this country some politicians and others who you know use me as clickbait and, and I think we've got to be, be cognizant of that be aware of that and not fall into that trap you have a place to be we'll catch up again okay thank you man. okay look my microphone is working I want to check if your microphone's working assalamu alaikum I'm going to come back on stage so there's a very important reason why I bring on this remark. So right. is there's a very important story here. Because Muslim mayors are like London buses. You wait ages for one Muslim mayor to come along, then two come along at the same time. But Hamza is making history. This is the man that represented the city of Westminster at the Platinum Jubilee. But also, here's where I want to make some noise. Our Lord Mayor will be representing the city of Westminster at the King's coronation. I'm back. It's me. All right. So it's the last day of Ramadan. What are you looking forward to have for iftar? Well, it's, it's, what, what I've missed is coffee, man. I've had, coffee, I've had 30, yeah? 30 days without coffee. I think my first shot of coffee, I'll be flying high. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. Yeah. All right. So you're running for re-election re next year. How do you look back at these last two terms? Well, we've had, during the last seven years, unprecedented events, uh, unprecedented events taking place. Brexit, a month after I became uh, mayor, Brexit was catastrophic for our city and our country, you know, us leaving the European Union. 2017, we had the awful fire at Grenfell with four terrorist attacks. Uh, we've had, of course, a pandemic. 
Uh, so it's been a really difficult time for our city, but I'm so proud of how we've bounced back. You were a fierce opponent of Brexit. You said, I think one time you said that you can draw a curve between the Brexit campaign and hate crimes. How has Brexit changed London? Well, look, just look at our economy, right? So you look at other cities and countries in Europe, uh, their economies haven't shrunk like ours, you know, their, their productivity hasn't gone down like ours. So the hard Brexit that the government negotiates has been damaging to our country. But the good news is, yeah. in London, our underlying strength is still strong. Financial services, professional services, culture, tech, uh, life sciences, uh, students. And so we're, we're doing okay in London, but we could be doing even better had we not left the EU. Last question. What are you looking for in a third term? I mean, what would, what would take priority? Would it be crime, cleaner air, housing crisis? What do you think? One of the things about uh, a city and uh, you know, a good leader is you've got to deal with a number of things at the same time but move forward. So we've got to fix housing crisis. We've yeah. made record number of uh, housing starts, record number of completions, record number of affordable homes. We've got to do much more. We've got to make sure we continue to tackle climate change and fix air pollution. We've got to continue to reduce crime in our city. We've also got to make sure young people have aspiration and hope. What I'm most excited about in my third term is the possibility of a government that's pro-London, and that's a Labour government with a general election eight months' time. Mayor Khan, thank you so Take much care. for coming on. Assalamu Appreciate Michael. it. Take Assalamu alaikum. Take care. One, two, three. From the Latin Project! Eyes on me this time! Three! Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> After three. One, Keep two, watching. three. From the Latin Project! Thank you, guys.